you very much, uh, Master of Ceremony, uh, Head of Communications at the CRC, Seni Marena, uh, Secretary uh, Omar Usman Job, uh, Vice Chair, and uh, other commissioners, and uh, also to the other staff of the CRC present here this morning. Uh, I say good morning to you all, but a special welcome to uh, the participants uh, at this gathering, uh, representing the media fraternity. And to you also, I say good morning and uh, welcome once again. Uh, first of all, I have the honor and pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the Secretariat of the CRC, that's the Constitutional Review Commission. And I do that on behalf of my colleague commissioners, uh, and as well uh, as the others within the Secretariat. Uh, this is obviously, as we've adopted in the past, the CRC media dialogue where we get together uh, in order to ensure that we have a common forum uh, to have an interesting and interactive dialogue uh, about the important work that we are jointly engaging. And I say jointly engaging because from day one, we all had agreed to form and forge a partnership that is between the CRC <coughs> and the media. As I have emphasized in previous press conferences, we as a commission are committed to continue and sustain the cordial, sincere, and mutually supportive relationship that the CRC has established with the media. We are cognizant of the important and strategic role the media plays in informing, educating, and conscientiously keeping abreast Gambians to enable them to participate actively and constructively in the constitution-making process. Through its open door policy, the CRC has endeavored since its inception to provide information to the media to enable them to provide factual, accurate, and timely information about the constitutional review process and to strengthen and lend credibility to public outreach activities, civic education, and the public consultation processes. As a commission, we acknowledge your commitment and value the partnership that we have. It is in this context that the CRC deemed it important and crucial to invite the media to participate in the recently concluded training workshop organized for all CRC staff last week, that is from the 16th to the 19th of October. And this was jointly facilitated by the CRC and International IDEA. Your participation was very engaging, and we hope that this partnership that we have fought together will become stronger as we continue the constitutional review process, guided by a high level of participation, inclusiveness, independence, and transparency. We have therefore invited you here today as part of our media engagement and dialogue strategy to exchange, update, and clarify issues relating to the ongoing work of the CRC, some of the challenges we face, and the way forward. In terms of the scope, uh, scope of work, uh, as it relates to progress made thus far, the CRC has now established a fully functional secretariat to facilitate the work mandated under the Constitutional Review Commission Act of 2017. The process of recruitment of staff for the Secretariat has been completed, and the Commission has now set up a permanent Secretariat in which we are holding this, con this dialogue. This will help ensure the independence of the Commission and a better facilitation of the commi Commission's work, accessibility by members of the public to the Commission, and adequate space for consultations and meetings as required from time to time. The Commission continues to hold its sittings, coupled with the finalization of key strategic protocols and documents to guide its work and facilitate the execution of the constitutional review process. From 26 September to 2nd October 2018, the CRC and its Secretariat staff, with the full cooperation of the National Council for Civic Education, headed by their chairman, al Haji Serin Fai, embarked on a nationwide pre-consultation tour covering all of the seven administrative regions in the Gambia as part of its strategic objective 
of ensuring a positive and meaningful engagement with Gambians. The purpose of the pre-consultation meetings was, amongst others, to sensitize governors, traditional <coughs> rulers, and women and youth representatives on matters concerning the Constitution as they relate to or affect the people within their regions, to explain the essence and process of constitutional review, and how the Gambian community can aid the process of constitutional reform, as well as to develop a partnership with these regional leaders whereby their communities remain engaged and continuously sensitized on matters of constitutional review leading up to the finalization of the draft new constitution. The participatory bottom-top consultative approach process with decentralized authorities and structures will ensure that a new Gambian constitution will be designed and developed upon the spirit of collective participation and all inclusiveness. From 16 to 19 October, the Commission organized a training and orientation workshop on the CRC Act, strategies, code of conduct and action plan, as well as issues relating to constitution making for all CRC staff and some media partners, which was jointly facilitated by the CRC and International IDEA. The training was well received and the participants were very engaging. <coughs> The CRC has, as of yesterday, deployed 12 regional coordinators to their respective regions to commence their regional work and prepare the ground for the CRC NCCE civic education tour and the CRC public consultations. The CRC expresses its gratitude to the regional governors who have each agreed to provide office space to our regional coordinators although in some case, cases the CRC has to refurbish the office space and provide furniture. The CRC NCC Civic Education Tour is set to commence today, Wednesday, the 24th of October, and will prepare the regional communities and set the ground and the tone for the public consultations to follow. This process will commence in the North Bank region and continue to the other regions until the end of the domestic public consultations. The CRC public consultations are set to commence in the North Bank region from Monday, 29th October, that's next week Monday, and are expected to last through to the middle of January 2019. In-country public consultations will be done in phases at district and ward levels with a view to engaging the populations and thus making the process as inclusive and participatory as possible. The public consultations will involve, amongst other things, inviting written contributions, responses to questionnaires, focused and thematic reviews, face-to-face -face dialogue, and contributions uh, through the CRC website, which is under construction. The public consultative process would also incorporate the views and aspirations of Gambians living in the diaspora, and it will cover some countries in Africa, Europe, Middle East, some states in the United States of America, as well as Canada. We have prepared a draft list of countries and states within the U.S. for the public consultations with Gambians in the diaspora, which we hope to finalize and publish as soon as we are able to confirm availability of funding for that aspect of our public engagement. As a safeguard and with the objective of ensuring that all Gambians and each community has the opportunity to express opinion on the constitution-making process, we are considering providing a separate platform whereby persons and communities that feel that their views may not have been properly or adequately represented at the public consultations that we are about to embark upon, to seek special audience with the CRC, and we will do our best to accommodate them. We had in the last week published the CRC issues document as part of our engagement process with the Gambian public and other stakeholders. The issues document has been designed and developed by the Commission to initiate dialogue on key constitutional matters which Gambians and other stakeholders may wish to address their minds to as we journey together in building a new constitution 
as mandated under the Constitutional Review Commission Act. I should point out and emphasize that the issue's documents should not be taken or viewed as constraining the thoughts of Gambians and other stakeholders as regards the issues that should be considered in developing the new constitution for the Gambia. Rather, the document must be viewed simply as a guide in, in, in <coughs> initiating dialogue, and we welcome further thoughts not addressed in the document. In addition to the issues document, the CRC, partnering with International IDEA, is developing a questionnaire which will be used to carry out a survey on key issues of constitutional review. The questionnaire, a draft of which is currently being reviewed and finalized, will map out in simple form issues that require positive or negative responses and in a few cases require only brief responses. This method, we hope, will further enable the CRC to make an objective assessment of the interests and aspirations of the Gambian people towards the constitution-making process. The Commission therefore seeks in advance the public's cooperation in facilitating responses to the questionnaires. Now I move on to discuss some of the challenges that we face as a commission. And like any new endeavor, there are bound to be some initial challenges, and I believe I made mention of this fact at the previous uh, uh, dialogue that we had. The CRC certainly does have its challenges, and these may be characterized as follows. The first, financial independence. Pursuant to the CRC Act of 2007, the funds of the Commission are to consist of monies appropriated to the Commission by the National Assembly and donations received from any lawful source approved <coughs> by the Minister. The Commission, through support from the Attorney General's Chambers and Ministry of Justice, has established two independent uh, CRC accounts with the Central Bank of the Gambia. Considering the short window of 18 months within which the CRC is to deliver on its mandate, it is crucial that the Commission's work is not hampered by unnecessary bureaucratic processes and procedures which have the potential to slow down the progress of the Commission's work. This is not only recognized, this compromises the assurance of proper effic efficiency and effectiveness. This is not only recognized by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice, whose full support, who fully supports this Commission. He is also working feverishly to ensure the objective of financial independence and a better facilitation of the work of the Commission. Securing adequate financial resources has unfortunately become one of the biggest challenges the Commission is currently grappling with as it endeavors to implement its action plan, carry out interface consultations with the Gambian public at home and abroad, and run the Secretariat uh, smoothly. The time frame for the public consultation is from October 2018 to June 2019. Since its inception, the CRC has been operating on ad hoc funding. This has the potential to compromise long-term planning and ensure the CRC keeps to the terms of its action plan. I am personally in regular dialogue with the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice under whose portfolio this project falls on this matter and I can assure you and the Gambian public of his unflinching support in securing necessary adequate funding uh, for the Commission. My personal assessment through our conversations is that he is equally frustrated by the bureaucracy. The Commission remains optimistic, however, that the ad hoc funding it is currently experiencing will be sorted out soon to ensure better long-term planning and due execution of the Commission's action plan. As we speak uh, and taking into account our action plan, all plans are in place to proceed with the uh, public consultations next week. Should there be any change to that, obviously we will let you, the members of the media, know that. But as of now, we are optimistic that uh, all will go well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the press, before I conclude, let us quickly remind ourselves once again that the mandate of the CRC is to draft a new constitution for the Gambia and to prepare a report in relation to that draft constitution. 
The constitutional review process will be an inclusive one designed to ensure that every Gambian at home and abroad and any other person who can bring value to the constitution-making process has the opportunity to do so. In conclusion, let me reiterate once again that the commission is independent and does not represent any particular interest group. The constitutional review process is open, transparent, and impartial, and that the process will be guided by the principles of participation, inclusiveness, representation, transparency, and national ownership. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I thank you very much for honoring this invitation, and we look forward <coughs> to more interactions with you in the future. And uh, I thank you on behalf of my fellow commissioners for your time and attention.